Demonstration Nugget, AWS Elastic Compute Cloud. Hey everyone, Ben Finkel here, and in this nugget, I want to show you how you can easily and quickly get a new EC2 instance spun up and start using it. So we will start a new EC2 instance right inside of our AWS dashboard. Then we'll connect securely to that instance. It's very important to, to keep security first and foremost in our mind when we're doing anything in the cloud. Finally, once we're finished, we will terminate the instance so that it doesn't sit there and spin up a whole bunch of charges for us while we're not using it. We'll start by launching the AWS Management Console, which you can find at aws.amazon.com. Now, if you watched my demonstration on the Management Console, you should be familiar with all this. We're simply going to sign into the console with our existing account. You will have to create an account first, and yes, you can use a retail Amazon website account. So if you have an account that you use to buy things off of amazon.com, you can sign in with that account here but you will still need to activate it on the console and you'll have to fill out a couple of forms a key piece of that being payment information you'll have to connect a credit card to your account before you can do most of the things that we're going to show off in these demos as you'll see momentarily it's really easy to spin up services that cost money so Amazon's going to make sure that they have an accurate uh, payment mechanism for you before they allow you to do that now once here you can choose EC2 from the dashboard in order to launch EC2 instances and if you're looking at a slightly different dashboard I'm bringing that up on screen right now don't worry that's the new version of the dashboard that they're currently rolling out in beta depending on which um, account you log in as some accounts are already into that beta some accounts are not but you can always get to the same service just by selecting EC2 the only thing you'll notice here is that it's a little more colorful they still have the icons on the screen so when I select EC2 it's going to bring me to the EC2 dashboard, which is a management interface for all of my EC2 instances across this account. If I want to review those instances, I can actually select that right here on the left-hand side, and we can see that, well, right now I don't have any instances running in this region. Remember, I have a region-specific view from this pull-down up here. I'm going to stay in the Oregon region for now. But this will show me all of the instances that I have running, and since I don't have any running instances, I can click this Launch Instance button that was also available back here on the dashboard launch instance and that's going to bring up the EC2 wizard that's going to allow me to very easily create an EC2 instance on the service. So the first thing you have to do when creating a new instance is choose a machine image. This is the image, the operating system and configuration settings in any pre-installed software that's going to launch with your image when it spins up or with your machine rather your instance when it spins up. From the quick start there's a number of really great obvious options including Amazon Linux, Red Hat Enterprise, Suze Enterprise, Ubuntu, Microsoft Windows, that's the one I want to use for this demonstration right here. And of course with each of these images you can see things like the root device type. In this case it's EBS. It's going to be EBS for most of the ones we look at. So recall that root device type indicates where the root device for this image is stored. Is it stored in Elastic Block Store or is it stored right inside of the hosted machine? Now if you're saying to yourself, self, well these images are great, but you know what, I need a little more flexibility, check out the AWS Marketplace. From here you can find thousands of different pre-configured images with a ton of different options on them. So if I need SQL, let's find one with MySQL. I'm just going to type MySQL, hit enter, um, and I should be able to find, oh there's some lamp powered Bitnami images. You'll find a whole bunch of different images that are going to cover all the different things that you might need. Here's one from someone called Turnkey Linux that has MySQL installed on it. So you have access to a whole bunch of pre-configured images that you might want to use or maybe you need to bring your own image. Well you can do that right here under My AMIs. I don't have any AMIs created but you can easily create your own images. One of the easiest ways to do that is to spin up an existing image, an existing AMI in EC2, make the configuration changes that you want to make and then convert it back to an image and all that's going to do is store that image in Amazon for you, I believe on Elastic Block Store, so you'll pay for the storage required to keep that image in EBS, and then you can spin up as many instances as you would like from your own custom image, from that image. There are also community AMIs, which are free MMIs that users like you and I have created and, you know, exposed to the community for free in order to help bolster the community and create better images out there. But for this nugget, all I want to do is come down here to Quick Start, and select this Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 base. Select the uh, item here. The next option, and notice along the top here, I've got my um, I've got my wizard kind of detailed out one through seven. So I'm going to walk through each of these steps here as I go through this wizard. And the second step is to choose my machine type. Recall, machine type is going to indicate primarily how many CPUs and how much memory I have available to me. So there are a lot of different machine types here for all sorts of different purposes. Um, under here, T2 Micro has a free tier eligible. If I hover over that, I can see that I can actually use this for free for a certain uh, time period. 
if I want to scroll down to some of the larger instances, like check out this one here, this M3 2X large. This is going to have eight cores, 30 gigs of RAM, and also two 80 gigabyte SSDs attached to it. As you can probably guess, that would be a pretty expensive image. I'm going to start with M3 medium, which is going to be um, one CPU, 3.75 gigs of RAM, and one 4 gigabyte SSD attached to it. Now that 4 gigabyte SSD is not the root volume. Recall the root volume is EBS backed. This is an instance store. So I'm actually getting 4 gigabytes of local temporary instance storage when I spin up this M3 image type. I can click next and configure my instance details. You see here I can choose to spin up more than one instance if I would like and even launch it into an auto scaling group so that those images or those instances can be scaled up and scaled down dynamically based on requests. I can make it a spot instance if I want. I can configure my networking and when we perform our nugget on, uh, on VPC you'll learn all about these different options here. You can join a domain since it's a Windows image. If I had a domain server out inside of my VPC I could join this machine to a domain. Scrolling down here, you can see that I can change the shutdown behavior for this machine. Should it stop or should it terminate the instance entirely? Recall from our lifecycle discussion that stopping an instance can be restarted, but when you terminate an instance, you're actually deleting it. I've also got protect against accidental termination here. If I check this box, what it's going to do is it won't let me terminate this machine inside of the dashboard until I actually come to the configuration options and uncheck this box. It's basically exactly what it sounds like, protect against uh, accidental termination. And then finally, under advanced details, I have my user data. If I want to put some user data in here, I could just type it right into that box and uh, click the next button here. Here's my storage. So we can see I've got my root volume type that's going to run on a general purpose SSD. I can choose different, um, different options there if I want, including provisioned IOPS SSD or a magnetic drive. I'll just leave it at the general purpose SSD. Also notice here that because it is an EBS backed volume, it's stored separately from the instance. I could uncheck this delete on termination flag for the root volume and that would cause my EBS volume to remain even after I terminated the instance. So if I needed to save this volume for any reason, I could uncheck that. And then here's that extra four gigabyte drive that we talked about, instance store backed. It's gonna be XVCDA, that'll be the name of the device inside of the, um, inside of the device manager. And I could even choose to add new volumes if I wanted to create new volumes and attach them to this machine. We can also tag our instance here, and importantly, a name is always a good tag to have. Let's call this the CBT Essentials. Oh, you know what? Let's make it one word. CBT Essentials Server. So that's going to create a name tag for this. It will be stored inside of my metadata for my, um, for my EC2 instance. I can configure my security group. And a security group you can think of as a collection of firewall settings. So we'll call this CB, oops, CBT RDP, um, and it is allow RDP access for CBT machines. Because we can see down here that by default what I've got is the RDP protocol on port 3389 being allowed from anywhere. Now here's where some security comes in. In our security nugget we talk about security of the cloud versus security in the cloud. And it's important to understand that while, yes, Amazon can build up all of the security parameters around the physical infrastructure and the platform and everything else that they provide to you, you can always undermine that because of your own configuration choices. So I could certainly come here and leave this open on anywhere. Any IP address, I could leave RDP port 3389 open. I could give my admin username a really insecure password and a hacker would probably be able to get into my system and there's nothing Amazon could do about it. This is security in the cloud and this is on us. It is incumbent on us to understand the implications of these security choices that we make here. So what I'm actually going to choose is my IP address. It looked up my IP address and it put it right in here. So this is going to limit RDP connections to only those connections that are initiated from my IP address. Notice it uses CIDR ranges slash 32 there so you can set a range of IP addresses if you want to allow anyone at your organization access via RDP. You can do that with the custom um, source right there and you indicate your own CIDR range for your own, uh, your own network. You can also add additional rules here. If this were going to be a web server, for instance, we could add HTTP in here uh, as well as HTTPS, and that would allow traffic on 80 and 443 inbound into the machine. That's another important note. This firewall security settings are only for inbound connections. Once that's all set, I can click Review and Launch. Here is my machine. I'll select Launch. The last thing that I have to do before I can launch it is actually create a key pair. And that key pair is going to allow me to view or set up the administrator password for Windows. Recall that I never indicated what the administrator username and password was. So I need this key pair 
in order to do that. I'm going to say create a new key pair and I will call it CBT Essentials Demo. And then I need to say download key pair. And notice that you have to download the key pair before you can continue. And this is the only time you'll be able to download it. I hope I said that loud enough and emphatically enough. This is the only time you get access to this PEM file. If you download it here and then lose it, you're not going to be able to get it back. And you're probably going to end up having to trash your instance and recreate it in order to get a new key pair in order to gain access to your instance. So once you download this key pair, this .pem file, you can see here it just downloaded. It's real quick. It's a tiny file. Now you can continue and you need to save that key pair for the next step. Select launch instance and we can see it's now launching. If I go back to um, pull down e or, uh, go back to my dashboard here and select EC2, when I get to my instances, we should see that the status of this instance is pending. Again, recall from our life cycle discussion that the first thing that happens after you start an instance is it goes to pending. Pending is waiting for that machine to spin up to start up. And because this is Windows, it's going to take a little bit longer than a Linux machine would. If you've ever worked with Windows and Linux, you know that Windows takes longer to start up. So this is going to take, you know, three to four minutes to start up. So there, that didn't take long at all. And now the instance state is running. But guess what? Windows is probably not started yet. The machine itself is up and running, but Windows is not. And one of the ways, really interesting, cool way that the Amazon allows us to check that is with a screenshot. If you right-click your instance and choose Settings, you can choose Get Instance Screenshot. And look what it's going to do. It's going to log an actual screenshot of the machine in its current state, the console output. So I can see, oh, it's still getting devices ready. I can click Refresh and see where it is now. So up oh, now it's at Control-Alt-Delete to sign in. Perfect. It's ready for me to sign in. That's awesome. So I'll say Close. Come back to my instance here. Because it's Windows, we can RDP into it really easily by default. If this were a Linux instance, we'd be SSHing into it. And that key pair generation that we did, by the way, would be used for the SSH terminal. So I'll select Connect right here. It's already, sorry, uh, just to show you here, it's already highlighted. You can see it's kind of highlighted in blue. If I had multiple instances here, you'd see that they were not highlighted. So I'll say Connect, and I can download the remote desktop file that's going to download an RDP file that'll launch remote desktop for me. I also have the option to get password here. Notice the username is administrator, but I need the password. How do I get the password? Yeah, with that key file. So I need to choose file, come to my downloads, and there is cbtessentials.pem. Choose that, decrypt the password. So by having that PEM file, I've acknowledged that I am the administrator. I can copy this password onto my clipboard, say close, and now when I launch my RDP session, and connect. I will connect with dot backslash administrator. Paste that password in. Select OK. Yep, now I will connect anyway, and this should connect me right onto the server. That was pretty big. I'm going to shrink it down and get it to fit on my screen here. So now I'm connected to my Microsoft Windows server. It's just setting up my initial user for my first time login. Recall I did not choose a very big instance, so it's a little bit slow. There it goes. Please wait for the user profile service. So within just a few minutes there, I think less than 10 minutes, we were able to spin up a new Windows instance on EC2, get secure access to it, connect to it. And from here, once this is actually done launching, we're able to launch a web browser and view the metadata and the user data if we'd like. So to view that data, the first thing I need to do is disable the default Windows Server security on um, Internet Explorer. So I'm going to select the server manager down here, scroll up and choose the local server. And then over here on the right hand side, I've got IE enhanced security configuration. Click the little word on. And for administrators, at least, I will turn off that security configuration. So now we can use Internet Explorer without uh, being hassle about security. And if we grab our Start button here, we select Internet Explorer, come into our address bar, and recall that the metadata can be found at http colon 169.254.169.254 forward slash latest. And under latest, we'll see the three options, dynamic data, metadata, and user data. So of course, metadata is found under meta-data. And there's all the different metadata that I can get for this server. If we uh, go to the end here, we want to know, I don't know, the AMI ID that was used to launch this instance. There it is, AMI 1712D877. If that's curious or interesting to you, you can get it right out of the metadata server. Same thing for user data. If we look back at latest, there's a user data option. I believe I input some user data in order to launch this instance. Hello, CBT learners. Excellent. So there's my data, my metadata, and my user data served up from the internal server. 
that again is accessible from inside this instance, although it's important to recall that it's not accessible from outside the instance, say from my local desktop. One last thing to check out if we uh, launch our Internet Explorer, or rather our local Windows Explorer, we should be able to see that extra drive. Remember we had configured two drives, so there was the, the um, EBS backed root volume here on C colon, and then on Z colon it's mapped temporary storage, four gigabytes to this Z colon drive. So that is that extra drive, the instant store local drive. Notice it's flagged as temporary storage because yeah, it's instant store backed. When we terminate or shut down this instance, that drive is going to go away and any data on it is going to disappear. It's, it's transient, it's ephemeral, and it's not going to stick around. Case in point, now that I'm done, I'd like to delete this instance. Uh, it's going to cost me money if I leave it running. I don't like spending money. So I'm going to right click here and choose instant state. I can stop, reboot, or terminate. Terminate is what I'd like to do. That will get rid of the instance entirely for me. Notice it's telling me that on an EBS backed instance, the default action is for the root EBS volume to be deleted. I could have changed that setting back when we created this instance, but I didn't. So now that this is set to delete, if I want to flag it to not delete on termination, I'd actually have to use the AWS CLI or the RESTful API. There's no way to do that inside of this interface. Regardless, I don't want to pay for this volume after my instance is deleted, so I'm just going to let it delete the volume. Also notice that storage on any local drives will be lost. So that Z colon that we just looked at, yeah, that's going to go away. That's not going to survive here, but I'm simply going to say yes, terminate. It's now shutting down. It will terminate this instance for the next 10 or 15 minutes. This instance will stay inside of my instance list with a state of terminated, and then it will go away. It'll be gone, but once it hits that terminated state, I don't have to worry about paying for it any longer. And that concludes this demonstration nugget on AWS EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. Just to recap, it's really easy to spin up an EC2 instance inside of the Amazon dashboard. You simply go to the EC2 dashboard, click Launch Instance, and you'd be walked through your wizard where you can choose your, your image, your machine type, and all of the different configuration options for that machine. Connecting to it is easy as well, as long as you've downloaded your private key pair file, your .pem file. And then you can terminate that instance when you're done equally easily simply by right-clicking or choosing the instance and selecting to terminate it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.